Now for an overview of pinhole imaging with the GG. For pinhole imaging, you place a pinhole aperture over the front of the GG detector such that all of the gamma rays that make it through to the detector must pass through this 60 degree opening in the front of the pinhole shield. The benefit of pinhole imaging is that you can unambiguously separate multiple sources in the field of view or multiple sources of the same isotope within the field of view. The drawback to pinhole imaging is that all of the counts have to pass through either a one, three, or five millimeter aperture before they reach the detector. So the efficiency is much lower than that of Compton imaging, but the spatial resolution is far superior. So here is the user interface for pinhole imaging. Again, on the left, you have the gamma ray energy spectrum, and on the right, you have the optical overlay onto which the gamma ray image will be superimposed. In the case of pinhole imaging, you see this red circle. The red circle indicates the 60-degree forward field of view through which the gamma rays can pass to hit the detector. The punchline is that anything you want to be in your pinhole image needs to be captured optically within this red circle for it to be captured in your gamma ray image. So to collect the image, just like with Compton imaging, you simply press the start button. You'll see on the left hand side of the screen the gamma ray image will start accumulating. Uh, note here, if I zoom in, we can already see the peaks coming from the barium and cobalt uh, in the energy spectrum. And now on the right hand side, if I double tap the pinhole view, we can see when we go to full screen, you see these dots. Those are locations on the detector where the gamma rays have interacted and they've been mapped back through the pinhole to the optical field of view. So here on the left, you can see there's a cluster of, of points where gamma rays have interacted. And you can start to see here on the right, another cluster of gamma rays. If you tap this button that looks like a little model of an atom, this will step through the different gamma rays that have been detected. So here you can see this is cobalt 57 and what you see displayed right now are only gamma rays in the 122 keV energy window. So this clustering of points on the left might lead you to believe that this source on the left is the cobalt 57 source. If you tap this uh, model of the atom again it will move through and we'll move down to this 81 keV gamma ray from barium and you can see here there's a cluster of points of gamma ray interactions that lead you to believe perhaps this source on the right is barium 133. If you tap show all again it will show all of the gamma rays and where they've interacted on the detector projected back through the pinhole. Now in addition to locating where these sources are, in this case now cobalt 57 and barium 133, you can quantify the amount of activity in each of these regions. With pinhole imaging you do so by using your finger to tap and draw a region of interest around each of these clusters of gamma ray interaction points. And you can see now that point number one, cobalt 57 shows 18 microcuries approximately within this region of interest number one and there are only seven counts of barium-133 in this region of interest number one which is consistent with no activity of barium-133 in the left region of interest. In the right region of interest number two here you see that there are only 10 or 11 counts of cobalt-57 this is registering an activity right now of 0.8 microcuries. I'll show you in just a moment how to account for the background uh, to get a better assessment of the activity in the energy window. And you can see on the right that the 81 keV energy, uh, energy window, that is the 81 keV gamma ray from barium, has over 100 counts and is registering an activity of about 20 microcuries. Now for a more detailed analysis of each of these regions of interest, you can take into account the background. Now to do so, you check this, click the Edit ROIs button, and you'll see a selection that says Select Background ROI. If you tap that checkbox, and then grab a region of interest that you believe to be outside of a source location, of course there's, there's some subjectivity to that, but if you grab any region, you can reset the background as many times as you'd like. 
click and drag a region. If you want to choose a different region, you simply tap the background and select a new region. And you can see now that background corrected the activity in ROI 1 is 16 microcuries of cobalt 57 and using the 81 keV gamma ray approximately 19 microcuries of barium 133 on the right hand side. When you're done with the analysis, if you want to clear the analysis or, or generate another analysis, simply tap each region of interest to hide it or get rid of it. And it, it will prompt you in case you've entered other information whether or not you want to get rid of that field of view. You have to remember just to unselect the background ROI.